All right, so uh, what's going on here? We have a robot owl. His name is Archimedes. He's named after the uh, familiar of Merlin from Arthurian, le uh, Arthurian legend. Uh, so the wizard had this owl called Archimedes. Uh, and I was just introduced. So he's got a brain inside of here that's a Raspberry Pi Zero W running uh, the Google AI Vision Kit. So he's got a camera here and a little speaker here and a button up here that also does uh, color feedback based on what emotion he thinks that you're showing at the time. Uh, and he was built for Maker Faire uh, Bay Area this year. So uh, the first of the things that go wrong with a project is when you're trying to design it. So I spent about two days just thinking about what to build with the vision kit because they had sent us this um, piece of technology that basically you assemble it inside of a cardboard box and I was gonna try and turn it into something that would give out ma uh, stickers uh, at Maker Fair. And that would be a really cool way to like, you know, get some attention and promote and stuff. But the joke is on me because basically he has turned into the diva and I am the machine that gives out stickers so he's turned the table <laughs> uh, But it also turned out that I accidentally built a project that I'd been wanting to build for a long time which was like a robotic mascot familiar thing. Um, once I got started designing, this is in Onshape, which is an online CAD tool that's in the browser. It's really convenient. Uh, I tried a new technique that I hadn't worked with before called lofting. Uh, and that's basically where you take a design on one level, uh, on one plane, and then another one on another plane, and you tell the CAD program to generate whatever is in between to join those two. And that worked pretty well, except for that I put parts of the wing features on the wrong plane, and therefore they generated really well, but completely detached from the rest of the wing, which is why you see this like large, smooth place where there should be more wing uh, feathers. Um, but otherwise, it looked pretty good, so I was like fine with that. Uh, and the other thing is that my 3D printer's spindle holder broke, and so I had to do it manually, which meant sitting there in the office and poking it every 10 minutes to manually advance the filament. And so I ended up there until 3 or 4 a.m. a couple of nights in a row, and when I was printing the wings, uh, I just hit the reprint button, because you need two of them, right? Turns out an owl doesn't fly super great with two left wings. Um, <laughs> so anyway. Um, then when I went to print the head, uh, it became a, a very special because I hadn't adjusted the Z axis correctly and so things didn't adhere as they should. We got a Cthulhu situation going on. Um, and that's why you see his beak is the, same, the way that it is. This shiny little thing is made of CDs. Basically you take a CD and you boil it for five minutes and then it delaminates, and then you can take the two halves and like cut them up and use them for stuff. And it works way better than working with a regular CD. So um, that's what, like basically a solution to this Cthulhu issue. You also see much larger eyebrows uh, than he currently has. And that's partly because they were a little wonky, but I feel like wizard eyebrows are okay. But in the case of this guy, he would stab me in the eyes with them. <laughs> so if you're designing like a shoulder-mounted robot, it's best to make sure that it's not going to stab you in the eyes. For any reason, like even if it's not shoulder mounted, just so you know that. <laughs> um, and then finally, since I was designing all this in a virtual environment, I'm really used to making stuff with my hands. Um, and so CAD was really, really challenging for me originally. And it still is in terms of like, I designed the head and wings in separate files. I wasn't totally sure of how, like in my head they fit together a certain way. But in the real world, they were differently proportioned, which turned out kind of cool because his head was larger than I thought. But with robots, that means that people think that they're really cute. Anytime that you have an animated creature or whatever, uh, I think it has to do with neoteny, the appearance of, of being childlike. Uh, and so he turned out extra cute, which is good. Um, <laughs> and then this little feather pup thingy was meant to be a tail but um, it looked kind of janky and weird on the back, and on the front it's great, and he has a little bow tie to hold it on. So uh, making a robot, um, I hadn't designed like an entire robot in CAD before, so making it modular was really useful. So you'll see that most of him is put together with armature wire, which is like an aluminum sculpting wire that sculptors use as like a basis for sculptures. Sculpting, I say that word a lot. <laughs> So then uh, we got to the part of assembling him and coding him. Inside the head is, as I said, a Raspberry Pi Zero W with a vision bonnet on it, and it runs Python. So they have this example called the joy detection demo, which is what he's running. 
Uh, I tried to make that natively control the servos at the same time so that you could do stuff like face tracking and whatever. However, I'm not good enough with Python and or, like I get the servo demo running and the joy detector working, but I think since maybe they share GPIO pins or something, um, which I think is obfuscated in the code, you can't actually tell that just by looking at one file at a time, uh, it wouldn't work. So I have an Arduino Maker 1000 controlling the servos separately. Um, code and money. Okay, so originally I was going to have him sit on this box and like open a box for you when you like smiled and looked happy enough to give you stickers, right? Um, and then Mohib here was like, oh yeah, it's, you're gonna put that on your shoulder, right? And I was like, what, no, wait! And like, it's like the perfect thing. So have your friends with you when you're like super late net hacking and like falling asleep and whatever. Um, there was another thing I had to say here. Oh yeah, his head kept crashing into his wings for a while, so that's another vote for uh, using armature wire so that you can move stuff around and have it be modular. Um, that is not why his wing is wiggly, that's a different thing, <laughs> whole other issue. Um, when I decided to create the harness, at first, uh, that is made out of armature wire as well, but that's like really uncomfortable to wear. It's very rigid and it kind of digs into you because it's like that thick. Um, which kind of sucks, but then you can just like put a bunch of scarves and whatever. There's actually a couple socks in here as well, uh, which help to insulate the wires from everything else, keep it from getting caught on stuff, and also make it look kind of cool and a lot more comfortable. And then the rest of the part here is inner tube from a bike, um, which is great for obfuscating part of the armature wire that wraps around my torso. Uh, so if you have something shoulder mounted, it really helps to have a lot of support, because otherwise you're just gonna like fall over. And I still get stuck sort of like this all day. <laughs> um, so if you haven't seen me wearing him the last couple days, that's why. Um, he still needs his beauty rest a lot. He's very much a diva. So uh, one of the things that you notice in here is that half of his beak is missing. This happens a lot. I carry spare half CDs with me so that I can just like hot glue bits back onto it. Um, but I did learn to bring a Tupperware with me to like travel with him in uh, and like at large large Tupperware, and it goes in like a rolling case. So, progress. And then his wings love to break off because I designed them with rigid loops that go around the armature wire, which looked really great for a while and made him kind of poseable, but those broke off really easily. So now I'm redesigning it with elastic loops. Actually, they're like little, you know when people braid their hair, they put little like elastics on it? The, yeah, they're those. Um, and right now I basically just like heated up some right angle headers in, in the uh, butane torch and then like shoved them into the PLA and like attached the things to there. So like that's gonna be changing and it's gonna be a whole new world like in, in a month or so. <laughs> um, so besides like elastics and armature wire and upcycled inner tubes, other stuff that I use a lot is hot glue and foam tape. So he's got, uh, inside of here is actually a couple loops of armature wire with heat shrink over them to insulate them and then foam tape to sort of hold his head in place. Um, his brain stopped working uh, about a month ago and it's because the vision bonnet here got unplugged from the Raspberry Pi down yonder and uh, the connector also broke when I tried to put it back together. I like had to pull it out with my fingernails because it's one of those little thin ribbon cable ones and uh, it just snapped in half, and then I tried, I was like, okay, there's half of it left in there, and then that half like also fell out and broke. So uh, there's lots of hot glue like keeping him together inside. Kind of like me. <laughs> <laughs> so this is an interesting thing. Part of the reason I wanted to build Archimedes was because uh, there's this whole thing around privacy where if you make a robot cute, then people will want to uh, interact with it. And it doesn't really matter what it's doing. Like, people know that it's doing face detection. Um, and part of the reason that I built him was so that I could have a way to test anti-facial recognition technology. So he does not store anyone's identity, um, but he does see people. Uh, another cool thing about the vision kit is that it doesn't have to be connected to internet in order to work. It doesn't talk to Google at all. Uh, and the only way to get inside his head is to like literally rip his head open and like plug it into a monitor or whatever. Um, so. Even so, uh, when I went into DEF CON, I covered his eye with a little foam tape patch, um, and then I took it off, and no one cared! It's like, what? 
So it's partly destroyed my faith in the hacker community, but I still try to be like nice and warn people when I'm going to like spaces like, okay, yeah, he does this thing, but he's turned off. Don't worry, like um, if you are building something with a camera or whatever, uh, we probably all know this already, but like request people's permission before you photograph them and tell people if there's gonna be a camera looking at them and stuff, because you don't want to get beaten up uh, or, I don't know, doxxed or whatever, <laughs> whatever it is that malicious humans do when you're being a jerk to them. Uh, but yeah, the, the voice kit, um, Google has these two kits, the AOI voice kit and vision kit, and the vision kit does not require internet, but the voice one does. That's also why I can't talk to him yet. So don't ask. He also can't fly. I would think that would be obvious, but like, okay. <sighs> the final thing is that um, he's a huge diva, he loves being friendly, but Head handshakes are like the death of him, so I'm sorry I couldn't shake your hand earlier. Fist bumps are great. Uh, headbutts are great. Like any kind of like you know other thing, like ha side hugs, whatever. Uh, don't stab yourself on his eyebrows, and don't give me a handshake because he like gets really upset around about being like jostled around. The next thing we're doing is we're going to be in London next weekend for a hackathon at Abbey Road. It's like a music hackathon. I'm really excited about it. But there's this company called Chirp um, that does basically machine-to-machine -machine communication with little R2-D2 noises, uh, and I want to work with them to try and make noises that I can actually whistle or like sing or whatever, and he can talk back to me, and that'll be like, because I think it's time he got a new brain. It's been a while since I was doing anything but like putting out fires, and so uh, I'm excited to go on a new adventure together. Um, thank you. Uh, if anybody's got questions, I have no idea if I have any time or not <laughs> for that, but I would love to talk to you after. Um, you can check me out on Twitter or Instagram. There's lots of progress photos and stuff. Um, this is where the tutorial is. Uh, and then also, uh, he's in the next Make magazine, which comes out on the 7th. But the article is now live, so if you look at my Twitter or Instagram or whatever, you can go find it. Thank you so much, and thank you. <laughs>